Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNonPhoto.com and this is a little short review looking at um, the Yongnuo OC E3 slash M uh, off camera TTL cord that you can use for Canon cameras. Um, I think Yongnuo do them for Nikon and uh, and Sony probably as well. I don't know, you have to check the, the, the website, but I know they definitely do ones for, for Canon and Nikon. And uh, a TTL off camera lead is a very useful thing. And I'll show you why. So this is basically what the lead looks like. We've got a, um, a little bit that pops into the hot shoe on the top of your Canon DSLR, and a bit where you can put it on a tripod and then fix your flash onto there as well. But why go TTL um, and why have a lead like this? Because obviously you could go um, wireless with something like, I mean, I've got the JGC wireless system here, which you fix that onto the top of your camera and then the master then triggers the slave, which, which fires your, your, your flash. Um, but the problem with that is uh, it's all manual. Similarly, if you were to use something like a, uh, a sync cable going from uh, your camera to your flash, some flashes will have a, a little... Uh, port on the side where you can just use a simple cable to to transmit the signal to tell it to flash or you can get little adapters which go on the hot shoe but the problem with that with those systems is that the uh, advanced aspects of your camera and your your flash and but in the fact that they can work together in uh, in through the lens mode is lost so you know so what am i talking about well say here i've got my canon 350d if I if I'm using the on camera flash, what happens is when you when you actually take a picture, um, you can't actually tell this, but when the when the flash is up, the flash actually fires a couple of times. And what happens is it fires once so that the camera can figure out what exposure to use for the subject in terms of flash, um, and then it fires again with the main flash, so so that it's correctly. Um, expose or it gives you an acceptable exposure so it's all done automatically and in fact on something like the 350d and most of the entry DSLRs you can't actually change that the flash is always automatic you can't there is no manual mode on the flash um, you can set manual mode obviously to do your exposure to, to for your ambient light but not for the flash you can use exposure compensation to make it flash compensation sorry to make it brighter or darker but but it's always always automatic and the beauty of that is that it makes it very simple and very easy to do great flash shots um, because the camera does all the hard work for you especially in say diff more difficult situations where there might be a lot of difference between the, your subject and, and the background and you can do all sorts of funky things now if we move over to something like um, a YN460-2 flash um, this is a manual flash and so when you put this on top of your camera uh, you lose all that automatic ability. What you've got to do is set the flash um, manually, so set the power um, to, to, to what you think it should be, do a bit of experimenting. Now, that is incredibly simple too, but if you're in a situation where things are changing very, very quickly, say you're at a party or an event where you've got to be moving around all the time and you haven't got the time to do um, test exposure, then a fully automatic flash is really, really good. And that would be something like obviously your off-camera flash, your on-camera flash. But the problem with that is that you know it's right next to the barrel of the lens, and it can lead to lots of red eye. Uh, the features look flat. You know, it's just a fairly boring way of doing it. If you get something like this Yongnuo YN565EX, this flash has um, TTL features built in. So when it's on the camera, like so, the camera will talk to the flash. Um, and so again, when, when we take a picture, oh, sorry, when it's ready to fire, <laughs> it wasn't quite ready to go. Let me just turn the power down so it's ready to go. So it's ready to fire. It will do like a double flash. It will, it will fire once. <laughs> it's a noisy band. I should have turned off the uh, the ready beep, shouldn't I? So it will fire once to test the exposure, and then it will fire it fire it again. To create an acceptable exposure, so you get two two flashes. Again, you can't see that it happens very very quickly. And the beauty of this, with something like a 580x or um, any of the Canon flashes, or lots of the, the, the flashes that use TTL through the lens metering or ETTL, whatever they call it, is that 
it's great for, for on uh, straight on shots as well, but it means that when you bounce the light as well off the ceiling uh, or off walls, you still get that TTL functional functionality. So you still get good exposures without having to worry about going up and down, adjusting the, the power on the back of your flash. All well and good, and it, and it makes it great for when you're running and gunning when you haven't got time to do test exposures and you know check the, the LCD on the back of your screen. But the problem with having the camera having the flash on your camera is that you know you're pretty much limited to that kind of view straight on, or you know you can bounce it off the ceiling, or you can bounce it off the walls, or behind you know straight up, or you know you can get the you could get the little bounce card out and you, you know you could feather the light over your subject. But what happens if, if say, you're, you're, you're outside or you're in a situation where there's lots of colour casts to the wall and what you need to do is get the camera, get the flash, you know, off the camera. You know, so you, went to, you want it like this. Now, we know we can do that very easily. We could use, a, you know, a, the slave functionality of most of the more advanced flashes or even the basic ones where by firing your own camera flash, that will fire your, your main flash. Or you could always go wireless with, you know, like the JJ system where you put that on the top of your camera. But the problem with that is that you're losing your ETTL functionality. So you've got to start adjusting the flash manually again on, on the back of the camera. And that's where, so sort of go full circle to where we started off, that's where the ETTL cord comes in. Because what the ETTL cord or the TTL cord does is it enables your camera to talk to the flash exactly as it would if it was plugged in because if you look on the top of the camera you can probably see there you've got all the little connections then if you look on the on the bottom of there you can see it's got the same number of connections and there it's got the same number of connections so in effect what happens is when you put this lead onto your camera thus and then with a TTL enabled flash like the Yongnuo 565 EX um, when you put it on, on there like that and I turn it on in effect the camera thinks that the flash is fixed to the top so we, we still keep all that TTL um, speed of not having to muck around trying to figure out what the exposures are and going up and down on our flash. But what it enables us to do now, I mean I'm a bit close on the video so you can't really see it, but it enables us to, to move the, the, the flash a long way away from the camera. And in the situation where we can't bounce the flash, we can physically move the flash away. You know, so, so you know, it's kind of, um, it, it, we, we can get that kind of uh, off camera, off axis flash, like lab Rembrandt and stuff like that. Obviously you'd probably be using like the, the diffuser and bouncing it and, and gelling it and things like that. But that's the beauty of an ETTL lead. And this one's quite a long one, but again, you, you know, you can work one handed and, uh, and, and work sort of, sort of like that, moving the light around, experimenting, um, especially with things like say where you're doing macro work um, and you want to move the camera around and, and play, play that way. And Another big advantage of going with a TTL lead when you're working close like this, I mean, you wouldn't run it really on the stands a long way away, is that there's absolutely no chance of interference from other people's cameras. Say you were, you know, doing a wedding shoot and you've got Uncle Joe and Uncle Bob all there with their DSLRs, you know, and maybe some of them even bought some of their flashes and they've got the commander modes on, um, or maybe they've got some wireless flash and they're holding up, you know, they've got some pocket wizards and stuff. Um, or again, if you were trying to do it optically, then their camera's all triggering your optical slaves. With this system, everything goes down the wire. So there's no chance of any interference like that at all. Um, so it's a great thing. Now normally these, these leads um, can be quite expensive, but obviously Yongnuo, being at the budget end of the market, um, they're not very expensive at all. I picked this one up from our local car boot sales second hand for about a fiver which is really, really cheap, but they're cheap on eBay, you know? So all you're looking for in this case is the Yongnuo OC-E3-M. Um, and I think they do different models depending on how long you want it to be, and obviously whether you want Canon or Nikon or Sony and stuff like that. But a very useful tool to have in your, in your, in your photography sort of flash kit because it gives you an interference-free 
hassle-free way of doing very, very quick um, flash exposures where you can be changing the angles. You know, it, the beauty with a system like this is, you know, you, you could be get, getting getting almost like a ring-like effect, getting the, getting the flash incredibly close to the lens, getting on top, get it, getting it underneath, doing all sorts of funky stuff without having to worry about sliding the camera around it and doing the angle. So, you know, if you've got flashes, ETTL flashes that can take advantage of it, I would say grab yourself a, uh, a TTL off camera uh, lead. It is really useful um, and an awful lot cheaper than investing in things like pocket wizards and um, the like for, for the professional photography where you might be in situations where the cheaper wireless systems just don't cut it. Well, I'm Rob from RobNonPhoto.com and that was my quick look at the Yongnuo OC-E3-M um, TTL off-camera flash lead. Thanks for watching.